let's say I give you the equation y plus 6 is equal to negative 21. Now, we can solve it, but we also need to know why would you ever write an equation like this. I'll give you a quick example. I can make up anything that this equation could represent. So let's say you're a scuba diver, you're underneath the water surface, and you start off at some depth below the water surface. So you might have, you know, a y axis, right? Because usually it's x and then y up and down, right? And then you have the water surface right here at y is equal to zero, like at the origin. So distance above the water surface is positive y, but distance is below the water surface. That's like, that's negative y because negative y goes down below. And right at the water surface is what y is equal to zero, right? So then I tell you that whatever depth you're at on, uh, on your dive, whatever depth below the water surface on your dive, that's where you start. But you increase going up to the surface a distance of six meters, right? And when you when you stop climbing that six meters, you are still a depth of 21 meters below the surface. So this equation would represent that situation because if we let y, the value of y, be my depth, let's say we're down here, you know, a little scuba diver person, something like that down here, some distance below the surface, we call it y, right? However far it is below the surface, right? And then we say that we start at that location and we swim up six meters. So that's why we start at some location below the surface and we swim up, meaning we add six meters. And at the end of swimming, we are still 21 meters below. You see, you have to have a reference point for all problems. In this case, the surface of the water is a natural reference point. And you, you just make up the, 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 the situation that anything above the surface is positive y units and anything below the surface is negative y units. That's why it says you're at negative 21 depth after you swim up. But it says we swim up six units. That's why we're adding six. We're going up towards, towards the surface and we're starting off at some position below. So the question is, if you swim up six meters and at the end of that, you're still 21 meters below the surface, where must you have started swimming from? That would be your initial position Y. So let's solve for that, right? We have Y plus six equals negative 21. So we wanna get y by itself, but y is not by itself. We are adding six to that. So in order to get rid of it, we do the opposite, subtract six, and so we must do it to the other side. Now on the left-hand side, the six minus six is going to give you zero. It's gonna go away. So the only thing you're gonna have left is y, which is what we wanna do. And what is 26 minus, uh, negative, 20, negative 21 minus six? So you're negative and then you're subtracting more it means you go deeper, deeper, deeper negative and that's negative 27. And so the answer to this is negative 27. So it makes sense if you think about it that if you start out at a depth of 27 meters below, the negative sign means 27 meters below the surface of the water, and then you swim up six meters, then you end up at a depth of only 21 meters. In other words, you start out right here but later on you end up right here. So this is negative 27 and this is negative 21. And what is the distance that you swam up? You swam up six meters. So that's what these things mean. So a lot of people are like, why would I ever use a negative number? Why would I ever? Well, negative and positive, you can keep track of things like above and below. You can keep track of things like temperature above zero, temperature below zero. You can keep track, track of things like speed in this direction and then the opposite would be a negative speed in the other direction. And so we put those into our equations with our signs and the answers we get, we don't have to think about it. We know this means 27 meters below the surface. All right, so let's take a look at problem number two. What about W minus 14 is equal to 22? We could make up some similar uh, uh, situation here, but now we're focused more on just solving the thing because we can make up tons of situations. Let me rewrite the equation. Here we are subtracting 14. We want this variable by itself, so we must then add 14. But if we do it to one side, we have to keep it balanced by adding 14 to the other side. Now, negative, the, remember the sign that comes before the number, that's the sign attached. So this is like negative 14 plus a positive 14, that gives zero. So the only thing you have left is W, and what is 22 plus 14? That's gonna be 30, and then two plus four is six, so 36, so the answer is 36. Now you can check this by putting 36 into this. 36 minus 14 is going to uh, indeed give you 22, just like you can check this one. Put negative 27 in here. What's negative 27 plus six? Uh, if you subtract them and put the sign with the larger absolute value and all the, the way that we do the addition of integers, you're gonna get negative 21 as the answer. 
All right, let's take a look at problem three. Negative 11 equals m plus 14. Let me rewrite it, negative 11 equals m plus 14. How do we get the variable by itself? We're adding 14 over here. We wanna get rid of that, so we undo it by subtracting 14. So we must do the same thing over here. We subtract 14 uh, on the other side. So on the right-hand side, we have 14 minus 14, so that goes away. So we just have m. What is negative 11 minus 14? You start out at a negative and you go deeper, deeper negative. So we essentially have to add these. One plus one is two, and then one plus four is five, so it's 25. But since negative uh, and then subtracting more gives you a deeper negative, it's really gonna be negative 25. So we can flip it around and say m is negative 25. You can also think of it as negative 11 plus a negative 14 if you wanna think of it that way, and you'll get negative 25. If you stick negative 25 in here, then when you subtract and put the sign on the, uh, on the uh, negative sign on the answer, you're gonna get negative 11 here as well. So you can always check these answers uh, for every one of these. All right, let's take a look. X minus 17 equals nine. Let me write it again. X minus 17 equals nine. All right, we have subtracted 17 and uh, we wanna get x by itself, so we undo it by adding 17. Now on the left, the negative 17 plus 17 is zero, so we're just left with x, and here we have uh, 17 plus nine. If it was 17 plus 10, it would be 27, so this must be 26, because it's only plus nine, so the answer we get is 26. All right. What about 14 is equal to y plus 28. Let me rewrite it again with a little more space. Y plus 28. So on the right hand side, we're adding 28. So to get rid of it, to get the variable by itself, we just subtract, if I can write correctly, it'd be a whole lot easier, subtract 28. And then I'll subtract 28 from the left hand side. All right. Now on the right hand side, 28 minus 28 is zero, and all we have left is y. On the left-hand side, you have to figure out what is 14 minus 28. So really, when you can't do the subtraction like that, subtract it normally. 28 minus 14 is 14, and then you have to slap a negative sign on there because you start here and you subtract away 14 and go another 14 negative. Uh, or you can think of it as uh, 14 plus a negative 28. And again, as we've said many times, when you're adding opposite signs, you just subtract them, and then the sign of the answer goes with the bigger absolute value, which is this one. So in any case, you flip it around, negative 14. And that's the final answer. All right. Let's take a look at 38 equals g minus 12. So rewrite it, 38 equals g minus 12. So what I want to do is get g by itself, but I'm subtracting 12. So I'm going to undo it by adding 12. And I'll have to do the same operation to both sides. Now on the right hand side, you have a negative 12 plus a positive 12, which is zero, which leaves g by itself. And then here, 38 plus two, that's gonna be, plus two is 40, and then 10 more is 50. So you're gonna get a 50 here, and then you can flip it around. That's not a 56, it's a 50. Uh, g will be 50, and that is the final answer. Of course, you can put 50 back in here. 50 minus 12 is 38, so you know the answer is correct. All right, let's take a look at the next problem. Only a few more. 17 is equal to p plus 26. So 17 uh, is equal to p plus 26. All right, so what do we have here? We have adding 26. We want to get this by itself, so we'll subtract 26, and we'll do the same thing to the other side. So here we have 26 minus 26. It goes away, so we have just a p. What is 17 minus 26? Uh, well. You, you, you can't really do that, right? But you can't, you can't really take 17 and subtract 26 in no terms of normal numbers, but we now know that you can, of course, have negative numbers. So just subtract it normally. 26 minus 17 is just nine, but because the subtraction is backwards, we know it has to be a negative nine. So the answer you get is negative nine right there. And then we can flip it around and say P is equal to negative nine, and that's the final answer. And then we can check it. We can take this negative nine and put it in here. Negative nine plus 26 is gonna look the same as just 26 minus nine. If it was 26 minus 10, it would be uh, 16, but it's 26 minus nine. 
So it would have to be then 17. So we can check it kind of in our head too. And I don't expect you to check like every single problem, but just know that you can check, you can check all of them uh, to verify that you're getting the right answer. All right, what about negative three is Z minus 29. Let's rewrite it, negative three equals Z minus 29. All right, we're subtracting 29. We wanna undo that by adding 29 because we do the opposite operation, so we add 29 here. So what do we have on the right-hand side? Negative 29 plus 29, positive 29, that's zero, so you just have a Z left over. And then negative three plus 29, it's kinda, you can think of it different ways. We can flip that around and make it like 29 minus three. That works too, and that's gonna be 26. Another way to do it is just subtract them normally, 29 minus three, uh, is 26, and the sign goes with the larger absolute value, so it's gonna be positive, and we can flip this around to, to z is equal to positive 26, and that's the final answer. So I think we can uh, squeeze in the last two problems kind of randomly on the board here. We only have two more. What about w minus 49 uh, is equal to 15? So let's give a little more room. w minus 49 equals 15. So, we're subtracting 49, we have to undo it by adding 49, and we do that to both sides, we add 49. And on the left-hand side, negative 49 plus a positive 49, zero, so we just have a W. And then here we have to figure out what uh, 49 plus 15 is. Now, if you think about it as 50 plus 15, it would be 65, but it's one less than that, it has to be 64. And so the answer has to be W is equal to a positive 64 and that's the final answer. All right, let me find one more little spot, probably right here, where we'll do our final little problem here. Let's take a look at negative 53 equals m plus eight. So we have negative 53 equals m plus eight. Now, what we have here is sub, uh, adding eight. We wanna undo it by subtracting eight, and so we have to do it to the, to the same to both sides. Now, eight minus eight is zero, so we just have m left over there. And here we have negative 53 minus eight. So 53 plus eight is going to be 61, and so it has to be negative 61. You think about it being negative $53 or $53 owing somebody. Subtract eight more dollars means I owe even more money, so I owe a total of $61. So negative minus negative is a deeper, deeper negative. So we flip it around, negative 61 is the value of m, and that's the final answer. So in the first problem, we started out by presenting the equation and then giving a practical situation for what it for what it means, and we talked about that at length. Every one of these equations, you could make up some situation. We could talk about money. You add so much money and you have this much, how much did you start with? We could talk about temperature. We start with some negative temperature and we go down this much, and how much, what temperature will you be at at the end? You see, we can make up anything. We talk about velocity, speed. I could even talk about magnetic fields, adding magnetic fields together, adding gravity together. I mean, we could go on and on. The point is, all of these equations, they mean something or they can mean something. So a lot of students learn how to solve them, but they have no idea what we would actually use them for because they're kind of easy. A lot of them, some of these with negative numbers are harder, but a lot of them are just very easy to kind of guess the answer. If you can guess the answer by looking at the equation, awesome. That's great, but that is not the point. It isn't the point, that's awesome. I will give you no credit for just knowing the answer. That's wrong, that's bad. What you want to do is show me how you're doing this because very soon I will give you an equation that you cannot do in your head. And the only way to solve them will be to do these steps in the order that I'm showing you how to do them. So this lesson, in this lesson we just had a single step, either adding or subtracting. Very soon we'll have multiple steps and then later in math we'll have equations that tons and tons of steps and you just can't do it in your head. So we have to learn how to do these simpler ones before we move on. So I'd like you to solve all of these. Make sure you're getting all the right answers. And when you feel like you have a good idea of what we're doing, follow me on to the next lesson. We're gonna learn how to solve equations that are single step, but are involving multiplication and division rather than what we did here, which was addition and subtraction. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.